Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us on our online service. As you can tell, we're not doing our live stream this week, but in fact, we're going to be hearing a message from our assistant senior pastor, Pastor Carl McCauley. Now this message, I've already listened to it, and it's an awesome message, and I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And so, whatever you receive, if you would, uh, put it in a comment section. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts and, and hear what you received from it. But I want to do this, I want to take some time to pray, and then after I pray, uh, the message is going to come on. Father, I thank you that uh, you're here with us. And as we listen to the word, I thank you, God, that you're going to speak to us, that you're going to give us a message that's going to encourage and teach and even open our eyes to some things. Lord, we receive your word. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open to what you have to say and what you have to show us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to the book of John. And chapter number one, just want to read two verses of scripture. Because when we read those verses, the first time we were reading through John, something jumped out of the page. And, and I think particularly in the environment that we're in, it is important to at least see what the Lord could be teaching us or showing to us right now. I like to go to John chapter one, verses 45 and 46. And I know that we're reading out of the ESV. Um, uh, but I didn't have the ESV last night. <laughs> I did have the New King James Version. Yeah. So uh, we're going to read out of that today. And uh, hopefully, well, Pastor Jerry's watching, so I guess I can't say you won't tell him next week that we read out of the wrong translation. All right. But let's go to the New King James Version. Just two verses of scripture. And it starts at John chapter one, verse number 45 and 46. Can we all read? I believe we all have the New King James. If you don't, you can read whatever translation that you have. And if someone asks what they heard, we'll just simply say we're speaking in tongues. All right. <laughs> Let's start at John chapter one, verse number 45 and 46. Let's read together. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see, come and see, come and see. I like to take my thought from just that, come and see. I know we welcome the online audience and I just want to welcome you again. And I believe that the Lord not only has a word for us who are here in person, but he has a word for you, our online audience. Nathanael is the fifth of a list of five whom Jesus called in John chapter one to be his disciple. And, 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 and I think that there's even something in that because he used different methods to call these five. And we are about uh, uh, house churches and uh, uh, growing house churches and multiplying house churches. And, and that involves evangelism and discipleship. And there are examples for us about how to evangelize just in the calling of these five. Remember, the uh, first two that were called, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, Andrew and John. Now, John's name is not mentioned, but everyone believes that John was with Andrew. And they were called because of the preaching of John the Baptist. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And the next day he sees Jesus again and says, behold the lamb. But with him next day, the next day is Andrew and John. And from that preaching, Andrew and John start following Jesus. People follow Jesus because of the preaching of his word. But you remember that Andrew had a brother. His brother's name was Peter. And Andrew went to Peter and told Peter, we have seen the Messiah. And Peter came and began to follow Jesus. That means that my first evangelistic field is my own home, is my own family, those that already know me. And Andrew went and just simply told Peter, I found him. And then Peter came and followed Jesus. The next one is really interesting because the next one is Philip. 
But the thing about Philip, you know what the scripture says? Is that Jesus found Philip. He didn't send someone. He didn't get a friend of his. He didn't preach to him. He just found him. And said, I'm going to Galilee. Follow me. Wait, 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 wait. There are some people that Jesus has to reach himself. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't hear me. Remember Saul of Tarsus? Who met Saul of Tarsus? Who brought Saul of Tarsus into the kingdom? It was Jesus himself. And sometimes your word looks like nothing I do can get their attention. Turn them over to Jesus. Now, what I'm pointing out is that Jesus used different methods to bring people to him. And the Bible says those things that were written aforetime are written for our learning. And he used them. He used the preaching of the word. He used the relationship in the family. And he just went out and got Philip. And then Philip went and he got this man named Nathaniel. Now, we don't know what the relationship was between Philip and and Nathaniel, they could have known each other before, but, but either way, Philip went to Nathaniel and he told Nathaniel to come and see. But when he first started talking to Nathaniel and John chapter one and verse number 46, after telling Nathaniel that he found him whom Moses and the law and also the prophets have talked about in John 1, 46, and Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. Life is full of obstacles. Life is full of those things that will try to keep me from Jesus. For Nathaniel, it was, you told me he's from where? Nazareth. Whether the Bible said anything is good is coming out of Nazareth. And sometimes there are little things that the enemy wants to use to keep us from Jesus. It'll be, wait a minute, I know the person that's in that church. And if they're holy, they don't need to be going there. There are things that the enemy uses. I mean, I, I, I've, I've listened to their worship. It, it, it just doesn't suit me. I'm not going. And for Nathaniel, it was what the knowledge he had of Nazareth and the knowledge he thought he had of the scriptures. Nazareth as a city wasn't that big of a place. And some people had the misunderstanding that there was never a prophet that came out of Nazareth. That's not true. What I want to point out is this. Sometimes we can believe something is true and it's just not true. And we begin to order our whole life by something that we think is true and it's not true. And we only find out the truth when we come to Jesus. Look at it first. He says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Where was Jesus born? He wasn't born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. They just made, some people just made the assumption. Since he came out of Nazareth, he must have been born in Nazareth. Go with me to John chapter 7 real quick. And in John chapter number 7 and verse number 40. In John chapter 7, Jesus is here on the Feast of Tabernacles. That's one of the three feast days that all the men had to come to Jerusalem. And this celebrated at the end of the harvest season. It also celebrated the time that they were in the wilderness and they had to sleep in tents or in booths. So they would sleep out, out in the open air or out in tents and booths. It's at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles that Jesus says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. After that particular instance in John chapter seven and verse number 40, it says, therefore, many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, truly, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, will the Christ come out of Galilee? 
Remember, Nazareth was one of the cities in Galilee. So here now, they're not only talking about the city of Nazareth, they're talking about a whole area of Galilee. It says, hey, hey, will, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Verse 42, has not the scripture said that David comes from the, that, I'm sorry, David, that Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a, a division among the people because of him. Oh, help me, Lord, help me. I want you to see how close they were to having a revelation that Jesus was in their midst. They even could tell you where Jesus should have been born. They used the word Bethlehem. Remember when the wise men came to Jerusalem, they asked where should the king of the Jews be born? Herod went and said for the chief priests and, and all the scribes and had them look in the Bible. And you know what they said? He should be born in Bethlehem. So guess where the wise men went? They went to Bethlehem. But who else went to Bethlehem? Nobody else went. The ones that knew didn't go. So just because I know something, if I'm not applying it or using it, it doesn't bring anything to my life. They didn't go. So they never saw him. But, but, but wait, they know where Jesus should have, should have been born, but they never asked Jesus, where were you born? They just made the assumption. Oh, no, 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 Lord, I wish I could make it as clear as you're making it to me. We are living in a time and age where there is so much information and very little truth. Everybody has an opinion. And everybody can go to some website and show me why their opinion is right. How do I navigate my way through a world like this? I have to come to Jesus and see for myself. Because he is, according to John 14, he's the way, the truth, and the life. We can be so close to the truth, and unless the Lord opens our eyes, we will not see it, even though we're right there, the truth is right in front of us. So that's where they were. Jesus has just spoken. He told them to come and drink. And they're saying, is this the Christ? And someone pipes up. He's from Nazareth. He's from the Galilee area. Nothing good comes out of the Galilee area. Well, they even made the statement that there's no prophet that has ever come from Galilee. Well, in the book of uh, 2 Kings, it talks about Jonah. And you know where Jonah came from in 2 Kings chapter 14 and verse number 25? He came from a, a town in the city of Galilee. So there was a prophet that came. No, you know, these are the priests that are saying this. I mean, we have to be careful. Even people that should know may not know. They may not have it right on this one issue. That doesn't mean that they're bad people. You don't have to go hate people and condemn them. You just need to know the truth and the truth will make you free. So there they were. Will anything good come out of now? They went from Nazareth to Galilee. And then in, in John chapter number seven, verse 52 this is moved from the people questioning who Jesus is to the religious leaders. And in John chapter number seven, in verse number 52, it says, and they answered and said to him, this is to Nicodemus. Are you also from Galilee? Search and look for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And everyone went to his own house. And everyone went to his own house. They were this close to the truth. And because the truth didn't come the way that they thought it should come, they just dropped what they had and they all went home. Oh, Lord, I wish I could paint that picture. In 2 Kings chapter number 14, in verse number 25, it says, And he restored the territory of Israel from the entrance of Hamath to the Sea of Arabah, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he had spoken through his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, 
the prophet who was from Gath Heifer, and Gath Heifer is in Galilee. It's right there in their own Bible. But they didn't see it. I'm just pointing that out because right now we live in a world where there are resident experts. And if we're not careful, we'll listen more to the resident experts than we will to the word of God. And the only thing that is true is the word of God. But I love, but how do I find the truth? I love what Nathaniel did. Because when Philip came to him and, 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 and said that I found this Jesus of Nazareth and he is the Christ, he's the Messiah. He said, come and see. You know what Nathaniel did? Even though he had doubts, even though he had concerns, even though there were issues, he went to see. Oh, no, somebody should get excited. That's what you need to do. Go and see. But many of them didn't go and see. And here's the thing about going and seeing. You have to go and see before you get the answer. Let me say it again. You got to go and see before you get the answer. In the Bible, it's simply called faith. I go and I believe he will meet me where he's going to meet me. And when Nathaniel went to see Jesus, before he could even get to Jesus, Jesus said, and guess what? I saw you sitting under a fig tree. Oh, my Lord. Jesus wasn't there when he was under the fig tree. But from where Jesus was in the spirit, he could see Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree. Oh, I, again, Lord, I wish I could paint the picture. You have to go, even though you don't see the answer, believing that if this is of God, he will get me the answer by the time I get there. Yeah. Let me tell you a little story. I got saved at the age of 28. Uh, I started working as an engineer at 22. So it's about six years after I, I, I became an engineer. And when I felt like the Lord was stirring me, I, 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 I knew something was going on. And, and, and I actually went and I got my old Bible. A Bible that I got at the age of 12. And my Sunday school teacher wrote in the cover of that Bible, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust to the Lord with all your heart, lean not your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your heart. Or direct your path, excuse me. I got that Bible. And you know what I did? I mean, I mean, I have studied this and studied that and, you know, all sciences and maths and what have you, physics and all that. Where do you start when you read a book? In the beginning. That's the, fir that, that's the first book right in the beginning. So I started there in the beginning. You know what? I got so confused. I said, wait, 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 wait. I mean, this guy, Methuselah. He lived to be 969 years old. We can get, barely get people to 100 nowadays. How did he live to be 969 years old? That became my stumbling block. I said, I can't go any further until I get the answer to this question. <laughs> no, seriously. They were offering baptism, and I can't, yeah, you know, I, I understand Jesus is my Savior, but wait, but I got a question here. Until I get that question answered, I can't move. Now, remember what I just said? Sometimes you have to go without getting the answer until the answer comes. And I, rem I was battling. And one day I was in a card shop. Now, I was seeking the Lord. I said, Lord, I, mean, I believe that you're uh, calling me and I don't know what all this means, but everything I know to do, I'm going to try to do it. And if you correct me, I'm going to try to follow that. And I was seeking the Lord. And I was just roaming, uh, going through this card shop and there was a card from an early church father that said, seek not to understand that you might believe, but believe that you might understand. Seek not to understand that you might believe, but believe that you might understand. I said, wait, 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 wait. How can I believe without understanding? 
I'm an engineer. You know, we got to understand this stuff over here. We can't just go out here and just, I can build a bridge and I don't understand what I'm doing. The bridge will fall down. Now, and the Lord did something. He took me back to the time when my, when my brother, well, we were both young. My brother is seven years younger than I am. And so I was there when he was brought home from the hospital and all that kind of stuff. And I watched him as he grew up and, you know, got to that crawling stage. Uh, he's not here, so I can tell this story. <laughs> that boy crawled, listen to this, backwards. I said, Mom, are you sure you brought the right child home? Because none of us do that or did that. And so what, what would happen here is that if he wanted to go somewhere, he would look where he wanted to go and he would turn around and do one of these numbers. And that's how he'd get to where he was going. Now, here's the thing. As I, the Lord brought that picture to my uh, memory. So what does that have to do with my question? He said this, why is he crawling backwards? Why does he turn around and do that? Well, because he doesn't know Newton's second law of motion that says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. He didn't know that. And he said, well, did you know that when you were his age? Well, no. Well, then how did you learn how to walk? I just watched somebody walk. I guess I figured it out. I don't know. In other words, you didn't understand the mechanics of, mo of motion, but you learned to walk. You didn't know all this science. You didn't know for a rocket to go up, the, the fuel has to come out or the uh, pressure has to come out at the bottom, has to push down in order to go up. And when you walk, I know you, many, of you, many of you probably don't even think about it, but when you walk, in order for you to go forward, you push backwards. Oh, try it sometime. <laughs> yeah, try it sometime. I like that. Yeah, try it sometime. <laughs> try walking sometime. <laughs> but you don't need to understand all that. And the Lord says, you don't need to understand everything about me to receive me as being me. I am God. And then he began to tell me, and if you understood everything about me, I wouldn't be big enough to solve your problem because you can't solve the problems you got. So I remember coming to church and I was really bothered because they were offering baptisms and I knew I should be baptized. Uh, I'd received the Lord, but I hadn't done everything he said to do. And he said to be baptized. And I was, but I don't understand this. And if I don't understand this, I'm not sure I can. And he said, this is what faith is all about. Hallelujah. Do you believe that I can know more than you know? Yes. Do you believe that there are things that you might think are true, but you may not have all the information yet? And I have it. So I went down and I got baptized. And you know what happened after I got baptized? All the, oh, somebody said what? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. What? I started finding out that there was a lot of science behind the creation of the earth that even explained some of those things that I had, including that the earth was formed, uh, the, the old King James says, in the water and out of the water. It's like that there is a large water vapor cloud around the earth as well as uh, water under the earth. So when we had the flood, not only did the waters come up from under the earth, but the waters also came from those clouds that were above the earth. And then they uh, dropped water on the earth for those X number of days. And all of a sudden, when I thought about that, someone said, you know, one of the way reasons why we age is because of this uh, 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 cosmic rays. And if you have this layer of water vapor around the earth, it filters out some of the cosmic rays. So that could explain why some people were able to live longer. Because you know something I did? I know nobody would probably do this. I went and took the ages in the book of Genesis and I began to plot them on a graph. And all of a sudden I found that right after the flood, all the ages began to go down. Now you guys looked at me and said, that guy's strange. Yes, I am, okay. <laughs> I agree with that statement. But my point is simply this. I didn't find out possible explanations until I made the decision to trust God where I was. Then I could walk into what I didn't know. And today, there are so many confusing things. There's so many things that we don't know. 
There are things that we think we know, and we're getting confused now as people are talking about these things. But don't become paralyzed. Instead, keep coming, walking to Jesus. I may not understand this. I may not understand that. I may not know what's going on over here. But one thing I do know that Jesus is Lord. That's one thing I do know. One thing I do know is he told me how to follow him. He told me how to walk. And what I know, he said, that's what I'm going to do. So Nathaniel didn't have the answer to his question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But one thing he heard is that there was a savior whose name was Jesus. Yes, he's from Nazareth. And we may not know what all of that means, but you can get to him by coming and seeing him. So he came and he saw. And here's the thing. As he's coming, the answer to his problem is being worked out. Because by the time he gets to Jesus, Jesus speaks to him and says, I already know you because I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Oh, uh, Pastor Jerry did a marvelous job pointing this thing out. But here's the thing. L look at this. That's all he needed to say to Nathaniel. And all of a sudden the world opened up to him. And he realized that Jesus was the Lord, was the Savior. Not only does the Lord work on outside situations, he's working on inside things. You see, I not only need to have him work on me on the outside, I there are some things on the inside that he needs to settle for me. You know, those things on the inside, they may not mean anything to anybody else, but they mean a whole lot to me. So Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree. We don't know what he was doing. Pastor Jerry did a marvelous job painting a picture of what was going on or what might be going on. He was there searching for answers and wanting to know, does, does anybody see me? Does anybody hear me? I'm, I'm praying and I'm asking, but I don't feel anything. I don't see anything. But all of a sudden, Jesus says, I saw you. But there was nobody around. That's what I'm trying to get you to know. I saw you. And for each and every one of us, if we will continue coming and seeing, there are answers to questions that we haven't even posed yet, that the Lord has already worked out. But we only get the answer as we're coming and seeing as we are approaching him, like I had to do when I gave my heart to the Lord, so that I don't understand all this. But what I do understand is this, and I can act on that and believe you to take care of the rest. Has anybody else ever been in a situation like that? That you didn't have all of the answers? Everything wasn't worked out? There wasn't a contract that you had to sign on the bottom to know exactly what was going on? All that he asked you to do was to trust him Come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me or learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That only is experience when we come to him. And he has a rest for us. He has answers for us. But we won't find him by staying on this side. We won't find him by going further away from him. We won't find him until we start walking toward him using what we do know. And as we walk toward him with what we do know, then he opens up to us things that we don't know. He opens up to us places that we have not been. He begins to answer some of those things that are caught or that are stuck within our hearts. I remember, well, maybe I shouldn't tell you this is a, okay. I gotta check my wife's face before I get ready to say this. I remember when the Lord talked to <laughs> smart man, very good. <laughs> Sorry, online audience, you didn't hear him. He said, smart man. I look at my wife's face before I say something. OK, there we go. <laughs> I said that right. Uh, but I remember. I really didn't know what love was all about. <laughs> I get an amen from my wife. Oh, my Lord, help us, Jesus, help us, Jesus, help us, Jesus, help us, Jesus. 
And so I said, Lord, I don't know what this is all about. And the Lord says, don't worry. Just do what I'm telling you to do. And I remember I went to church and I said, I don't know anything about all these Sunday school classes and all that sort of stuff. I don't know about that. Someone said, well, we need somebody to tutor. Tutor in what? Math. Oh, I can tutor in math. I've, I've done a lot of math. I can tutor math. So I start tutoring in math. And there's this young lady that they told me that she's getting ready to take this test and she just like to re refresh herself with the test. I said, okay, that's fine. And so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come down to the church on, well, what day do you want me to come down? Yeah, come down. So I came down to church on that day. She's supposed to be there at a certain time. Uh, 15 minutes passed. <laughs> Half hour passed. An hour passed. And I called and found out she was never coming. Oh, you want to know who that was? Oh, I, I can't tell you right now. Well, we set up another time and we came and she said, I'm getting ready to take the final. I said, OK, that's good. That's good. So let's go to, to the end of the book and we'll do a few problems at the end of the book. And, you know, I'll see what I can help you. Went to the end of the book. Found out, didn't really know what was at the end of the book. So let's go back one chapter. Not quite sure it was in that chapter either. Let's go back one more chapter. And that one was a whole lot fuzzy. So why don't we just close the book? <laughs> and we spent about two hours, was it? Two and a half hours. And we taught from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. I think you got a C or something, right? <laughs> well, I, oh, a B. Okay, a B. Okay, she got, she said, I like that. She said, I got a B or a C. But let's choose a B. We'll, we'll, we'll stay with the B, okay? That makes me feel better as a teacher. She got a beat. <laughs> but my point was, I met her. And then all of a sudden, her car failed. And remember now, the Lord said, I'm going to show you love. And her car failed, so I had to drive 45 miles into church. So I passed by her house on the way there. So I would say, okay, I'll just pick you up and take you to church. Uh, she had four children. So we crammed five of them in my car. Well, with me, it'd be five. With her, I guess it'd be five, too. And do you know what happened? She had kids that needed some help with their schoolwork. That's all I could do. I didn't know anything about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I didn't know anything about those things. Then. And you know what began to happen? A man that didn't know anything about love Love was shown to him and opportunities was given to me to express that love. But it only happened because I went as far as I could go with what I had. And the job of the devil is to get me to stop back here because I don't know the next step. I, it's not that I, Lord, said, can you take the step I'm asking you to take? Yeah, but Lord, what about, don't worry about what happens after that. Come and see. Come and see what I will not do for someone who comes to me, for someone who's willing to trust in me. I will take their world and shake it upside down and I will do something. I will plant their feet on solid ground and I give them a song that even the angels can't sing. That song is I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So here is Nathan. And all that Philip says, I can't answer all the questions you brought up. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I found the Savior. And all I'm asking you to do is come and see. You know how I got to church? Come and see. My friend said, you know, there's something about this church. They're talking about Jesus and they're talking about the Holy Spirit. And it's just causing things to change on the inside of me. I think you should come. I said, look, I ain't got no time for that, man. I'm, 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 I'm doing all right. I got a job, I got a car, I got a place. I'm doing all right. Forgot about hell, okay? I'm doing all right. <laughs> See, then he said this. You've always told me that you could go and listen to anybody at least one time. 
and then you can make up your mind if you should come back. He said, come and see this. And I remember going to the church. Wait, wait, wait. I sat in the last seat in the back. <laughs> now, you guys think I have a fairly pleasant personality now. Well, I didn't always have that. All right. And I dared somebody to come and ask me to move. And at that first service, I can't remember all the details, but I know that the minister got up and he ministered that there are different kinds of people. There are people that are sick and don't know they're sick. There are people that are sick and know they're sick, but not seeking any help. And then there are people that are sick and are seeking help. Which one are you? I had just finished my five year plan. I was strange back in those days I had a five year plan. And on my five year plan, I would write down all the things that I uh, need to do. And then I'd write beside them the probability of me doing them. And I still remember that list. And one of the things on that list was I should go to church. I said, yep, you're right. Then I wrote down the probability. I put down, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but the Bible says, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. And the Lord honored the fact that I would even write it on the list. Yes. And that same year was the year I got saved. Yes. There was no door open when I wrote that list. But all of a sudden, things began to fall into place. And I met Sister Terry Thomas. <laughs> and four children. And all four of them are my children now. And most people don't know that they're not my biological children, but every single one of them call me dad. Every single one of their children call me grandpa. Because God is able to take the solitary and put them into families. But I only found it because I came and I saw. Didn't see the whole picture. I saw enough to get to him. And then he began to open up a world to me that I never even believed or knew existed. And now I'm here with you in front of you. A man who stuttered so bad that when my mom found out from my wife that I was preaching, she laughed and said, he can't preach. He can't even talk. <laughs> because I came and I saw. And the Lord is saying to us, come and see. These house churches, come and see. The growing of house churches, come and see. Multiplication of house churches, come and see. OSL, come and see. The Lord has things for us. And all he's asking us to do is to grab hold of his hand. His hand is right here reaching out to us. And we can say, but I, I, I don't know what happens after I grab your hand. What's going to happen next? He says, leave that to me. That's what Nathaniel did. And he was one of my disciples. He saw the dead raised to life. He saw me walk on water. He saw marvelous things. How did it start? He came and he saw. In the midst of his doubts. In the midst of things he didn't understand. In the midst of things that might have been confusing to him. Only thing I know, you said, come, and I'm coming. Isn't that what Peter said? And he wound up walking on water because Jesus says, come. And he's saying, come to us right now, wherever you are. If he says, come, even though you don't see how you're going to make it, trust him. If we have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. We can say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into sea. If we don't doubt it in our hearts, to be cast into the sea. Let's believe him. And let's bring everything to God in prayer. I can't believe CNN, NBC, whatever all the, those other things are. Because nobody knows the end from the beginning. And some things, in order for you to understand, and you need to know what the end of the thing is. None of us know the end of the thing. 
But Jesus does. He says, grab my hand and I will guide you. I will lead you. Don't worry about what you don't know. Just act on what you do know. And I'll grow you into what you don't know. Because I'm a faithful God. I'm a father. I'm a savior. I'm a deliverer. Can we bow our heads? Those of you that are on the online audience, can you bow your head as well? Father God, there is a whole lot of detail that we could share. But sometimes you don't want to want us to cloud the issue with all kinds of details. You just want to make the message clear. Clear into those that Jesus called in the book of John in chapter number one. They just responded to come and see. Whether it was Andrew or John, whether it was Peter, whether it was Philip, whether it was Nathaniel. And when they came to you and saw what you had, their lives were turned upside down. They experienced things they'd never heard or seen before. The most important thing, they found eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you that that eternal life is available to us right now. I believe that there are people in the sound of my voice, whether they're here or online, that I do not know. But like I was holding back on giving my heart to the Lord because I had questions. What about this? This one said this. It didn't turn out that way. Now, what about all this? And they're holding back from giving their heart to you. Help them, O oh Lord, to realize there will always be things we don't know. There will always be things that we, do, that we don't understand. But can we settle this? In the beginning, God. Can we settle this? In the beginning was the Word who was with God and was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can we settle this, that I have a sin issue, which is nothing, I, and I, there's nothing I can do about that on my own. But I can receive a Savior who became like me, but without sin, and died for me. Oh, I pray if you're here today, and if you have not received Jesus, particularly if it's because of all the things you don't know, you will take what you do know, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that you would receive him even right now. And then those of us who know the Lord, I know that we have crossed that hurdle, but there's always things that the enemy wants to put, that life wants to put, sometimes even myself, that are roadblocks in the way of me doing or being all that God has called me to be. But today, Lord, if you reveal one of those things to us, we give it back to you and say, Lord, help me over this hurdle. Help me just to rest in what I do know about you and to trust you to bring me into life and that more abundantly. Because that's what you have for those of us who know you. You have abundant life, not just life. And if we're settling for anything less, let us repent of that, confess our sins, and move on with you. Every day, there are decisions that need to be made. Decisions about removing roadblocks, barriers, stumbling block. And we do it by coming to you as far as we can go with what we know. And let you build in us the things that we don't know. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us. How you've never called us to do or be any more than what we can do or be. But if we do what we can do and be, you promise that you will come on the other end and open up a world and possibilities that we never considered. I lift up our house churches, O oh Lord. Let them grow and let them multiply. I lift up our discipleship, O oh Lord. Let us not just be about discipling ourselves. Let us realize that there's a world that needs to come to Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord, to be part of the, of the plan that you have to bring salvation to this world. 
and help us not to be caught up in arguing about things that we just don't know. But instead, let us stand on the things that we do know. And that is that Jesus saves and you have saved me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.